hello everyone welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome nice to meet you I'm Deborah Campos and if you like hiking videos or ultralight videos gear I hope you consider subscribing to my channel because this is all that I do here hiking and ultralight hiking what I want to talk about today it's about my hiking setup or my gear setup for this year and I hope to go back to the Tahoe Ring Trail this month to finish my hiking to finish my hike my 25 miles hike all right so let's start let's talk a little bit about ultralight hiking um, by no means you need to be ultralight to go hike you don't you can go with whatever gear you have. The most important thing is just get out there and hike and be in nature and get all the benefits of backpacking, which is the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. So yes, no, you do not need to be ultra light, but hiking with light gear, it's different. Um, it's something different. It's not for everybody. But I would say once you've hiked with a 10 pound, once you backpacked with a 10 pound or less backpack, you will see for yourself the difference of more energy, more enjoyment, and just being able to hike more miles. That's what it is. Um, also like hiking, it's like I said, it's not for everyone, but some people are interested in ultra light hiking, including me. That's why I got into ultralight. Um, another thing is that ultralight hiking is not really, it's just not about buying light gear. It's a, it's a philosophy. It's wanting to, a little bit, wanting to be a little bit closer to nature by taking less of our daily comforts. And, and I'm telling you, that works because that's how I feel when I go out backpacking with my small back. Um, it's the fact that I feel closer to nature. I feel much closer sleeping, you know, with the minimal or hiking with the minimal. My last point is that ultralight also takes a certain personality. Uh, I would say you do not have to be obsessive, but you, you, you are pretty much into it. You don't mind spending hours and hours researching trying to find the lightest gear and it takes also a lot of um, dedication to just you know weigh every single thing and consider this instead of that it just takes a lot of dedication too another thing that it takes is a lot of organization you need to be organized to um, everything how you carry your pack from how you pack it has to has to get a thought you need to think about it so it takes a lot of thinking also also it takes a lot of planning like you need to plan to the T your trips so you know that what you're taking is enough so for example the weather the terrain where you're going if you're planning a trip that's two three months ahead um, what's the weather gonna be like then and a lot of research about other people that have done that trail. The more you plan, the more confident you feel, confident you feel about your gear, and the less gear you can take. Also, ultralight doesn't happen overnight. You don't just start the next day being ultralight. It takes a lot of months and sometimes years to get to the, the pack and the weight that you want. The most important thing is that ultralight gear has to make sense. It has to be, um, above all, above all, it has to be functional. It has to do what you're expecting it to do. And then the second part is the weight. So what I do is when I'm looking for gear to substitute or when I see something online uh, or from a video or something, I will consider the weight. But then right along with the weight, right there, it's functionality does it work does it do what I'm I'm want I wanted to do what I needed to do and then after that it's packability is just 
if it's something super light but it's not packable it's not small enough it doesn't pack into a small item um, it doesn't also work for me another part it's of course then comes price price it's a very important part of ultra light because you know ultra light gear can be expensive um, but hiking for me has a certain priority in my life at the very top because it's what keeps me sane it's what keeps me healthy i invest in ultralight as it is for my health so paying for a little bit more for something that will allow me to continue to hiking it's something that i do of course there are some things that are absurdly uh, like absurdly expensive and when i cannot get myself to pull the trigger for that gear because of the price then it means it shouldn't happen last thing for ultra light is that you need to be patient sometimes you get things wrong and but there's also the fun of that is that trying always trying something new and okay this didn't work so let's try that other thing that other thing didn't work so let's go back to to the first one so it, it takes a lot of patience it takes a lot of um, creativity I want to say that it is important to weight your gear, to have a list, to have an inventory, and to be able to visually see your, your what you have without having to open up your backpack all the time and just looking at it because you know you'll forget what you have. So, Lighter Pack is the website that I use to you know look at my gear, to compare weights, to analyze and. Sometimes the decision I'm making a gear, I do it through light, lighter pack because what I do is just I put that gear that I want instead of the one that I have with a new weight and then I see the difference in weight and then that one, not only that, but you know, that's one of the things that makes me decide. So uh, using lighterpack.com, it's a great website. Actually, my basic setup, my basic hiking gear setup is the three season gear is the gear that's gonna take me from above freezing all the way to summer temperatures. So any hiking that I'm gonna be doing between March and, and June and uh, September through November, that's gonna be my three season gear. And on top of that, I make changes. So my second uh, gear list is my summer gear list, which what I do is I grab my third, I just get it from my, um, three season list and I just change it. I substitute certain things that I don't need during the hot season summer. So for example, um, uh, the pad that I sleep on, the sleeping bag, um, the rain gear, uh, even my cook set, I like sometimes goes in stoveless just because it's hot. I'm not looking to eat anything hot during the summer. So why don't we get started with my three season hiking gear? So I, like I said, I have been playing with my gear for a while when it comes to coming to ultra light. And I believe now I have gone into the super, super ultra light um, category. And I can't see going any lower than that, but kind of, I mean, who knows? There's so many, um, new things always coming up. So I enjoy experimenting and, you know, trying new things. Oh, also, I wanted to let you guys know that all these ideas or things that I have in my gear, the type of gear that I have, are greatly influenced by many people that I have followed through these years. So my three season gear, it's a very simple. My weight, it's 5.5, five and a half pounds for my my three season setup it is a very comfortable setup I can, I do not miss anything using that setup at all everything I have there it's because I like it and I don't miss anything else in the back country so starting with my backpack I use the sub Nero 30 liters from CPAX and I was using before the 38 liters, but my um, base weight now it's so low that it's become really small where the 38 liters, it's already too big. Like I can't fill it up. It, and so it, 
gets kind of clunky. So I decided just to start hiking with my 7 euro, 30 liters. It's aerobic, 100, 100 denier aerobic, and I really like this backpack. It's very comfortable. There's one thing that I miss on that backpack. It's the um, waist belt. I do like that when I use the waist belt in backpacks, it keeps it from shifting. But I'll tell you, with a light gear, it doesn't shift that much. So I do like the Sub Nero, and it has enough space for all my gear, and it it keeps its structure so it doesn't shift around all the time. I also like that backpack, this backpack because I was able to make a lot of adjustments, creating some loops and doing some creative things there that I can attach more things if I need to, especially drying clothing if I have to. And I have the front part of my backpack, which is uh, the it's from Justin Yot Oshalite on Facebook. It's where I carry my water bottle in the front. So I like having it in the front. It works very good for me. I, I also carry water on the side, but in the desert, you sometimes you need five liters capacity. And if I keep one liter in front of me, I can put two more liters on each side of my backpack. Moving to my shelter. Uh, my shelter is the Hexamate Pocket Tarp from z -Packs. Um it, it's for me the perfect shelter. I haven't thought about getting any other shelter. It's incredibly light. It has three components to it. So I use the bathtub for the floor and it's attached to the, to, to the tarp. And I also sometimes when I need, if I don't know if there's gonna be mosquitoes or not, I bring my Nanonet, my Cedar Summit Nanonet, but it's not always. This time for the Tahoe Rim Trail, I'm not gonna bring it. I also use a titanium, Shepherd Hooks titanium lightweight um, ground stakes. And they are perfect for me. I don't know, they never give me any trouble. Now moving on to my sleeping system. My sleeping system is the one that changes the most between three seasons and summer season. The summer. So during the three seasons, I just use my half bed, the Thermarest Uber Light half um, size, and it comes up to down almost to my knees actually because I'm short. So and but the only thing is that under the Uber Light, I have to use I, my MLG Eva foam. It's the I think it's, um, I cut it down to 64 inches, 20 by 64. So that's exactly my height. And then what happens is I use it underneath on my hiking, underneath my pad so it doesn't slide around when I'm sleeping because it's terrible. You will end up off your pad if you don't have that foam underneath. It also protects the pad, you know, from poking, um, with pokey things or sharp things. And then in the summer, what I have is, I have decided to just use the foam pad. I'm gonna, de I decided to use the one quarter inch MLD Eva foam. And that's a little bit thicker, it's double size uh, thickness than the, the one eighth inch that I used in three seasons. But that foam will, should be suffice, should suffice for the R value that I need. So the R value usually that I need for the summer, it's around one, 1 1.5. When in three seasons, I need about two and a half to three R value. And for sleeping bags, for three seasons, I use my z -Packs sleeping bag full zipper, which has baffles. And it's something that I really like because it blocks the zip because the other back bags, they have a zipper, but then the air, the cold air gets through. This one, because of the baffles, the cold air doesn't go in. So it keeps me warmer. So the 330, it's perfect. Say comfort for that bag is 35 and above. So anything below 35, 32, or you know, near and freezing temperatures, I need something extra. Of course, I will put my clothes and everything on, 
but I decided to try this. It's not a BV, it's a liner from LMLD. And when I say my MLD is Mountain Laurel Designs. Uh, they have this liner that you can use inside your bag and it's just nylon 7D, it's very thin. But I wanted to use outside my bag. So sleep with my bag inside and it'll work kind of like a BV and it'll, you know, seal the warm air even better inside. It says on the website that it increases up to 10 degrees on your sleeping system. So um, that should be the edge that I need for my sleeping um, during three seasons. This year I decided to pick up a Z-Pax pillow just because mainly because I've been having a lot of tension headaches. So if I wake up with a kinky neck, then I will have a headache for the rest of the day. So I need that support, especially because I'm a side sleeper. I need that support side piece. In the summer, I use my enlightening equipment, 50 degrees bag. And this one, it's a quilt. And all my gear goes in my z -Packs dry bag, my sleeping gear. So I kind of got tired of trying to look for the right bag uh, to protect my gear from getting wet. I decided to get a large uh, dry bag from z -Packs because I can put everything in there, close it up, it's dry, it's safe. When it comes to packed clothing, for three seasons, like I take my fleece, which is the QU97 fleece, but um, I, I made a mistake of buying it with a hoodie. And the thing is that I don't need that hoodie. I just, I'm over hooded. I have everything that I have has a hood. So the best thing would have been to buy a fleece without the hood. So what I did, I just cut off the hood of my, <laughs> Of my fleece. Another piece of clothing that I bring with me for a winter uh, for three season hiking it's my socks, you know, socks and underwear. The socks that I've been using now are they are merino wool and acrylic so they're mixed half and half and I found that to be a very good socks because what happened is they will they have the ability to be antimicrobial because of the merino wool but they also repel humidity because of the synthetic fabrics for the summer i bring my enlightened equipment wind pants and i bring my top from mount bell zeoline three ounces let's talk about rain Rain, it's, for me, it's almost like a worthless thing to take here, but I always bring it. It's one of the things that I always make sure I have some sort of rain protection. It changes from the three season to the summer rain gear that I have. During three, three seasons, I have my rain uh, pants from z -Packs. They're very lightweight. They're about three ounces, and they seem to be good. I haven't had a chance to try them in the rain because it doesn't rain here but I'm pretty sure they will work for rain and my jacket I found the outdoor research helium 2 the new version that was released in 2020 which uh, I've seen great reviews online and that it's way better than the previous one and it doesn't wet out and they have a different um, fabric now. I, I forgot what it is that they use now. It's a three layer. So it should be a good jacket. And it's only a six ounces jacket. So, And for my summer setup for rain, I rather during the summer have an umbrella. The reason that I like the umbrella is because I can use it also for the heat, for the sun. And <clears throat> It's more airy, it, it covers me, the coverage is way better. So I found this umbrella on Amazon actually, it's called A Brawley uh, Ultralight. 
umbrella. It's only three ounces. It is the same that I, it looks the same as the Mount Bell one, which is also three ounces. But what I like about this one, I bought the Mount Bell and it broke in a windy day. What I like about this one is this one has the wind mechanism that when you, wind hits, it opens back. So when that happens, it doesn't break. It's very important that an umbrella has the wind mechanism to work for backpacking. And for my clothing setup, I use just my wind jacket from Enlightened Equipment. I'm sorry, from z -Packs. I It works for me during the summer. It's not, I don't need much more than that. And a rain skirt. My rain skirt is from Enlightened Equipment. It was very, it's very lightweight. I think it's 1.8 ounces. So I'm happy with my setup. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. I have my cooking system different than when I have it in the summer. What I do is for the three season hiking, I actually always bring my stove with me. ERS stove, it's a tiny little stove, works, does what it does, it boils water. And that's the only different thing in my cooking season from three seasons to summer. Everything else is the same. It's my Tox titanium pot, I have my titanium spoon, a small. I also have a mini lighter, which it's necessary to work with your stove. And I also bring a bandana with my cooking system, which is to clean my dishes. In. And for food storage for three seasons, I use, well, three seasons in the summer, I hang my food. So what I use is a big Ziploc bag where I can put all my food inside and then put it inside a grocery shopping bag. But the ones that I use is not a plastic one that you throw it away. I just use the recycling one, the recyclable one. So it's good because you can just tie it on the, on the top and hang it. It's very easy for hanging on the trees. And then I use my bear cord to, for ha hanging. The cord that I use is a very lightweight cord, it's Dyneema cord that I buy, it's about an ounce uh, for 27 feet. This time to go to Tahoe Rim Trail, I will be taking my earth sack and my lop sack ceiling bag. This one is for odors. My, my water system for backpacking it's pretty much the same three seasons in summer, all the same. Um, I bring my smart water, which is the one that I put in front. And for extra storage and for filtering also, I use the ever new water bags, one and a half liter each. They also have the two liter each, but for the Sub Nero, the best fitting is the one and a half liter. And I use one on each side of my bag. My filter that I use is the one that everybody hates, is the Sawyer Micro. And I have no problems with that filter yet. I believe the reason that it has lasted for me so long is that is my water filter, the plunger. So what I, the plunger is what keeps my filter working because of the pressure for cleaning it, for back flushing. Back flushing is so much better. So let's start with my ditty bag. I just carry a very few things. I carry a toothbrush, cut in half so it's packable, so it fits in there. I carry a hair tie. I have a comb. I also have a floss. So I will be using baking soda to brush my teeth. And I also carry a small repair kit, which is very good. Um, for what I need, I just need a few patches, um, sewing needle, and a repair for my my blowing my blow up pad, and then for my medical kit. So this year I decided to do carry just things that I have used, which are medicine. I bring ibuprofen, Tylenol. I bring Benadryl for any kind of allergic reaction. 
and I also bring um, Imodium AD that I have a tweezer which is very useful because you I have gotten thorns on my hands before and thank God to the tweezer I was able to get rid of it last but not least I bring my Leukotape now I have changed from the regular Leukotape to the kinesiology Leukotape the Leukotape K it's way better and I learned that last year than the regular look at tape because it's stretchy it is stretched another thing that I like is it has the backing paper so I don't need to worry about putting a you know backing paper and folding and cutting it and then I also bring gauze and another thing that I learned is the gauze that you bring should be non-adherent gauze not the one that sticks to your open wound because that is painful to pull it out. A few more things that I bring also on my duty bag is an extra um, bandana for cleaning my body, cleaning sweat, cleaning whatever I need. Um, an ace bandage sport, elastic, two inches, just because um, sometimes if I ever get a knee pain, I can wrap my knee with that. And I also bring during three seasons, not in the summer, bread bags. When you have to cross the rivers and get wet, get your feet wet, your socks wet, and you're about to get to camp, and you know at night the temperatures are gonna fall, make sure, and you need to walk around. I don't use camp shoes, so I, what I do is just change my socks at camp and put the bread bags so I can put my feet back again into the wet shoes and not get my socks wet. This is head net, which I will also use occasionally. My poop system, it's a very simple one. I just have a trowel where to dig my cat holes and I use a bidet. I do not use any, I don't bring paper towels anymore. I'm, I'm sorry, toilet papers anymore to the back country. So I just hook it up to the smart water bottle, wash myself, and I can always dry myself afterwards with my cloth, my peak banana this is powder soap which i also have it on my duty bag and it's from pika outdoors unscented has no smell let's talk electronics <laughs> if it's a two to three day up to four days actually trip I can bring my small 3500 milliamp power add bank, which is very small. It's only three and a half ounces and it works fine. It'll recharge my phone once. I put my phone in airplane mode and I lower the light as much as possible. So my phone will last two days, almost three days actually, without recharging. I want to try now the little small headlamps that a lot of hikers are using and they are called i they're just keychain headlamps i uh, forgot the ones that they use but the one that i'm going to be using is Ny the nikor tiki it's amazing it's only half an ounce and what i did i hooked it up to a shock cord so i can use it on my head so the reason that i want to try this one or, and I think it's gonna work, it's because I don't hike at night. I just don't. And when I use it, it's in the morning because I usually wake up when the sun is still, you know, it's still dark. So I need that in the mornings to hike. But that's usually about 30 minutes into the hiking and then you start seeing light, it's already light. And my cables that I use for charging my things are just the tiny small cables. If I were to do a long distance and had to, let's say, stop at a town and recharge, then I'm, probably my batter, battery bank would be different. Would be the I would bring the Nikkor NB10000, very lightweight. I would bring uh, longer cables and I would bring my wall charger. Another thing, and this is not part of my base, my base pack weight. It's my fanny pack. The reason that I know include it is because it's not in my backpack. 
it's in the front of my body. I carry my cell phone. I carry my earbuds. I carry my wallet. I carry my sunscreen, which is also unscented now. And I also carry my Vaseline, which is the only cream sort of lotion that I'm bringing with me that I'm gonna use for my lips. You can also use on wounds for healing. And it's a great fire starter. And last but not least, we are gonna talk about clothing, what I wear in the back country. That also changes a little bit from three seasons to summer, hiking clothes. So the three season ones is, uh, what I use is my hoodie. And the hoodie that I use is different from the one that other people are using. It's zipped. I, I would not be able to use a hoodie that has no zipper in the front. And it comes up to here. I think it would make me too hot. I just, it, it's not feasible for me. I need the zipper to control air and control my temperature. In the two, three season, I would just use a t-shirt with uh, sleeves underneath my hoodie. During the day when it gets hot, if it ever gets too hot or I stop by to, to rest, I can always take my hoodie off and stay with my t-shirt. But in the summer, I, was, I use a tank top and the tank top will also allow me to remove my hoodie if I need to. And my pants, in the, for three seasons, I use leggings because leggings keep me warmer actually in the three seasons hiking. Now, for the summer, I use my hiking zip-off pants because they are larger, they are roomier inside, and they vent much better, so they keep me cool. Also, because they're zip-off, I can zip off the bottom part of the legs and just use them as shorts if I ever need to. Um, I use my hat for um, hiking. I don't use it the entire day. I only use it when it gets hot, when the sun is beating up on me, let's say from 11 to three o'clock. After that, I just take it off again and use, usually just have a bandana on my hair. Bandanas are gray for my hair. Just keep it out of the way and I usually just tie it up in a ponytail. Another thing that I have is my tracking pole, which helps me a lot for hiking. I never thought I liked it so much, but using one tracking pole for hiking, it's the best. It keeps you from falling, it keeps you balanced, and also I use it for my tent, my Z-Pax Hexamid uh, pocket tarp. So my trekking pole always comes with me, it's very lightweight, it's only five ounces. Also wearing these um, Saucony Peregrines trail runners, they have amazing lugs, very, very rugged. Um, and I don't know if you can see there, the rock plates. This was the main reason why I got these shoes. I need shoes that have drop. I can't wear zero shoes, but I also need shoes that have rock plates to avoid blisters and foot pain. Last but not least, I use my neck cord. And this can be controversial because some people think you shouldn't have this and you shouldn't bring a knife to the back country. You know, I like bringing a knife to the backcountry, so I use it on my neck, and it gets, it's always hiding under my, my shirt, and it does have a knife, which is just a neck knife, a small, tiny one, which I use for my cookings and everything that I need. I also have my compass there on this um, cord. I also have a small, tiny little flashlight there. It's another flashlight from my core, and I like to use that flashlight in the morning to pack my things. And the last thing that I have, it's a whistle because of safety. Always good to have a whistle nearby. I forgot to say, uh, tell you about one more thing that I have. It's my Garmin watch. It's a 4Runner 35 and it's a great watch. Um, great for, um, you know, just in town, just to tracking your steps. But what I use is just for time, just to look at the time. I like having it on my wrist 
and it keeps me going and I know I have an idea of how far or slow I'm going. So that's it guys. I can't think of anything else right now. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Put your comment in the se session, comment section below. I will gladly answer to the best of my ability. Don't give up on, on, your, on your journey to be ultra light. Being ultra light is great. You don't need to be ultra light to be in the backcountry to enjoy the backcountry. Absolutely not. But being ultra light has its, per its perks and it's, it's very great. It's a, it's a great way to do. If that's what you want to do to enjoy the backcountry more, go ahead, go for it. Invest in yourself. It'll be a great investment. Don't think that you're wasting money. You are not wasting money when it comes to your health and your mental health. So I hope that you guys got some information from my ultralight setups now. And I hope to be back talking more about all my gear, like each individual things. So go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading a new video. And I hope you guys are enjoying your summer. You're having a beautiful summer. I will see you guys later. Have a great one. And I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.